Okay, in this video, we continue our discussion of ARC Section 80 as it relates to the compilation of financial statements. And uh, in the past few videos, we've been talking about uh, preparing the accountant's compilation report, um, and that included the general requirements to be included in the report, as well as what, how to alter it if the uh, financial statements are prepared under a special purpose framework. And now we'll discuss um, how should our compilation report be modified if uh, we are not independent of the client. And so basically, if we're not independent with respect to the entity, we should indicate our lack of independence in a final paragraph of our compilation report. And if we elect to disclose our reason for why we're not um, independent or that our independence is impaired, then we should include those reasons in that paragraph that we add to the compilation report. So we don't necessarily have to say why we are, we, our independence is impaired, um, but if we do, we need to um, discuss it in a final paragraph in the compilation report. So we have some explanatory material here, A33 through 35. So let's go down there and get some more information on how uh, we can apply this requirement. Okay, now we're in the explanatory material about uh, how to alter our compilation report when we are not independent. And this is really helpful because they provide us a lot of examples of the paragraph that we need to add at the end of our compilation report. So an example of a disclosure that we might um, add to indicate our lack of independence would simply say, I am or we are not independent with respect to XYZ company. And that's it. Also, as we saw in the requirements, we're not uh, precluded from um, stating the reason for why our independence is impaired. And we have a few examples of how we might go about doing that here. So we could say we are not independent with XYZ company um, because we had a direct financial interest in XYZ company. We're not independent with XYZ because an individual of our immediate family uh, or of our engagement team was employed by XYZ company. Or we might say we're not independent of XYZ because we performed certain um, accounting services. Maybe we performed uh, bookkeeping services or something like that for the entity. And so that impaired our independence. So in general, we have a, a lot of um, flexibility as far as how we explain that we weren't independent and the reason for why, but it can certainly be a pretty simple disclosure as we see here. So we see here we have some example compilation reports uh, that include this particular paragraph down here at Exhibit B. So let's go down to Exhibit B and take a look at how they have included these particular paragraphs in the compilation report. Okay, here we're in Exhibit B where we've got some illustrative examples of uh, compilation reports on financial statements. And we have a lot of illustrations here, but what we're uh, going for or wanting to take a look at is the ones where it says the independence is impaired. And so we have um, this one here, the independence is impaired. And this one here, independence is impaired. So illustration four and five. So let's take a look at those and see how they disclose that. There's one, two, three, four. Remember that in the requirements, the, um, this disclosure has to be included in the last paragraph of the letter. And we say that in illustration four, we see that's the case. Um, I or we are not independent with respect to X, Y, Z. So, and then the signature of the uh, accountant, and et cetera. So here at illustration number five, in the last paragraph of the report, we see that they're not independent and they exclude, included the uh, reason for why they're not independent. They said a member of the engagement team has a direct financial interest in XYZ. So uh, that's some good examples of how we might disclose our, um, that our independence is impaired with respect to the entity.